So the chestiest of all of the sports presentations clearly came from the team behind NBA Live. Sean O'Brien, who has been on the Press Row podcast multiple times and will be on again uh, relatively soon, came on stage, shirt very untucked <laughs> under the sport jacket, um, brought on the hoop god, did some digital face scanning. He, he took some pointed shots at NBA 2K about online play um, and, uh, and other things. A very, very, very bold, confident presentation from NBA Live, which is, as you know, people know who follow this stuff, is, you know, trails the NBA 2K series, the, the mighty NBA 2K series um, significantly. Uh, you know, I'm not going to say this is a make-or-break year for NBA Live because we thought last year was, and here they are again. Brian, we know, I don't necessarily subscribe to the theory that you do that, you know, this is the last shot. I, I think that NBA Live is not going anywhere no matter what. But regardless, it's the underdog, and uh, they came out firing away. Uh, Ryan Lewis, I'm curious what your thoughts are on the overall um, NBA Live attitude on stage at EA's uh, E3 presentation. Well, I was pretty surprised, like how much, how much time they got. You know, like how much of the presentation was actually devoted to them. Um, I, you know, you always have those awkward moments on those E3 uh, in the press conferences where you bring some athlete or somebody up there to, you know, like you have these executives and you have people that are like either like an athlete or someone that's like part of the gaming community, and it's just always weird. But uh, in general. Um, you know, like, I, it's got to do so much. I mean, it's such an uphill battle for them. I'm glad that it's it's happening and that they are putting a, a focus on it. But I didn't see anything where I was like, oh, man, I need to, you know, NBA 2K is in trouble. I mean, they have Spike Lee this year. So, you know, I, I did think – so the I think the thing that obviously, I mean, myself and, and probably quite a, quite a bit of the Internet is looking at is like kind of this, you know, the face scanning technology that they have – kind of the weird big face that was sitting up on the stage from uh, from Hoop God. Um, but, you know, like, I, I really think if if that works, if that's, like, intuitive and if it works at how they showed how it works and they don't have the same kind of issues, they can start picking away at things that NBA 2K has tried and failed at. So online, uh, you know, the face, the face scanning technology, if you can bring those in, you're already beating them on two places where they're kind of weak. So... Um, Overall, I mean, I think it was, a, it was a good effort by them. I mean, we'll have to see, though, because, you know, we really haven't seen much as far as 2K16's gameplay and features go. Um, I think we've seen actually more now of NBA Live, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, you know, they, we'll have to see. You know, you bring up an interesting point, Brian. We had I, NBA Live getting a, a significant time at the EA press conference, NBA 2K, nowhere to be seen in Sony's press conference or in Microsoft's. Um, you know, I don't know if they're on the show floor. I believe that they are, but I don't know if it's 2K16 or 2K15. Uh, your overall thoughts on on the you know the the very interesting juxtaposition. NBA 2K is the dominant game, but yet they're have a very meager presence at E3. NBA Live is is you know fighting a very strong uphill battle, and here they are you know being kind of bombastic on the show floor. Kind of an interesting scenario, don't you think? Yeah, it's uh, if you if you look at the two games though, really it comes down to NBA 2K has nothing to gain by being at E3. They're not going to increase their sales, not going to increase awareness. They're pretty much at the top right now. They don't need to do it. They can save. You know, save those bullets for later when they have the stage to themselves, uh, figuratively speaking. So uh, at the same time, you have NBA Live, which really has nothing to lose. Its sales can't go much lower. Uh, its future is in doubt. It's, you know, the justification as far as to investors that EA can make about it uh, is not, is not very uh, significant at this point uh, because... It, People have to buy live in order to play Ultimate Team, and we've had this discussion before. If they want to make digital revenue, which is the reason why live is still live right now is because it could down the line make a lot of money, right? Because NBA 2K is doing it right now. The NBA market uh, could support two games that were successful uh, if both games were on, you know, if, if, 
if consumers felt both games were on fairly level ground. But right now, people aren't buying live, so they're not getting the digital revenue they need uh, to to grow. And so this is really, I think, one one last shot. If they're gonna if they're gonna go down swinging, uh, do it. Go down swinging. Um, and throw everything out there, and I think that's what we saw them doing with with promises about online play. When Live had good online play for like NBA Live 10, Live 14 and Live 15 weren't exactly stellar online. So, and there's no way they can know for sure online is going to be great for Live 16 beforehand. So they can make promises, maybe knowing that hey, if if it doesn't turn out, then you know we we're just we're done anyway. So. Uh, and same with the, the face scan thing where where if it works, awesome, uh, because it, that's a big component to these games now is that attachment that you have with your, your, your own player. Uh, if it doesn't work like they, like they showed, then I guess you're back in the 2K territory where theirs didn't work, but they still promoted it anyway. Uh, actually, they promoted horrible-looking faces, uh, which was kind of an insult to, to people who struggled with that. So... Um, it is interesting that that one basketball game, that competing basketball games, one takes advantage of the stage and one doesn't. But they're in such different places now that it that it almost makes sense because, like I said, live has nothing to lose at this point, and 2K has nothing really to gain from that. Ryan Lewis, you are not a member of the media. You are not a uh, a triple A video game developer in this space. You're a consumer, right? You're a guy who makes a decision as to what games to spend your sixty dollars on. Uh, did anything that you saw from NBA Live make you think to yourself, "Hmm, I might give NBA Live a shot this year"? Not really. I mean, I I don't know if I'm the best. Uh, so. I do like basketball, but we're Seattle guys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, I was I was a huge basketball fan growing up. Um, but you know, th- for that reason, I, I'm I'm not gonna you know I'm definitely not gonna buy two basketball games. I know that. And NBA 2K has been so strong for so long, and the mode that I care most about, they've put um, you know frequency vibe guy. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna turn that vibrations, man. Frequency <laughs> vibrations. I mean, that's like I feel like they. They know they know me because that's what I would go by if I was an NBA player. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, can't I actually that, checked yeah. a funny story on that. I actually checked when they announced that if the Twitter handle was available, and apparently you can't have Twitter handles that long. So I was going to register Freak Vibrations, um, <laughs> but then I it was just too much work. It's like a Mark <laughs> reference. Yeah, forget it. Yeah. Um, no, I mean in general, it's you know it did. It's weird because I've kind of ignored live a little bit. Like I'm just kind of, I'm just you know I feel like they have such a long way to go. But from what I've seen of it, it looks good. And I feel like if you're just kind of an EA, you like how EA does stuff. Um, you know they're getting better, and I feel like they're gonna have something for you eventually. And I, and I as my understanding is that they're actually gonna announce like another mode. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, it, I think people think that's going to be some kind of a story mode. So we'll see. I mean, hey, if they can push other franchises in EA's, um, you know, catalog, <coughs> if, uh, um, to do some kind of more interesting nodes, or modes, or nodes even, um, <laughs> I'm all for it, you know, because I know that they do share ideas between those, those, those games on some level. So, hey, if they can do that, if they can make some of the other games more interesting to me, I'm, I'm all about it. Um, Ryan, know, oh, sorry, Rich. Uh, I was just gonna say Ryan made made a good. Uh, I think it was wasn't a point he was making, but but in a sense it was because he was saying that you know it, he has to choose between the two basketball games. So, mm-hmm. so NBA Live isn't in a situation where they can just look good and people will buy it because they're basketball fans. People have sixty dollars and they have to make a decision between one or the other, and which one. Even if Live is better, do they have a reason to switch? or consider live over 2K. And, and it's not even just the basketball games. I mean, this is something I'm going to write about coming up, but it's absurd, this late August to late September release window. Uh, everything comes out there. We've got Madden, yep. FIFA, NHL, Pro Evolution yep. Soccer, NBA 2K16, yep. NBA yep. Live 16, uh, yep. uh, Forza 6. Uh, yep. to- today they announced Tony Hawk... Uh, the new Tony Hawk game on the same day that, as the two basketball games, a week Minions after the two soccer game. games. That EA Minions mobile game? You didn't mention that. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's, other, there's non-sports related games, right, even in that window because that's a very popular time uh, to release games. So people are not just 
like here's my sixty dollars. What basketball game am I get? It's here's my sixty dollars or one hundred and twenty dollars. What of this gigantic group of games am I going to get? And inevitably, NBA Live on you know wh whether it's better or not, that's going to be at the bottom. And so even if it's a better game, does it do well enough to 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 really show promise for the future? It's when they announced that they were going to release it on September 29th, which is technically the same day as NBA 2K, but really four days behind it. Um, my first thought was they they should have waited. And normally I wouldn't say release a game after your competitor. That's an awful idea in most cases. But they would have had a month window where people could have bought 2K and maybe had another reason to buy another basketball game a month later. Or people bought, you know, had to make the decisions on all those games in September. And then you have another opportunity to get people at the end of October where the actual NBA season starts. It almost would have made more sense for them to hold it back a bit as opposed to the last couple of years where they have released after NBA 2K, but that's only been by a week or two. A week or two is nothing. Uh, but a month, that allows people, you know, that becomes a different decision in people's minds. And then you have, you have a bigger window for a demo. You put out a free demo. You have the EA Access five days for people to try it out. Then people are more, more likely to buy that game, I think, if they had that buffer between everything else. Instead, you're jamming it in there, and it's inevitably, like I said, it's going to be the last option on people's lists uh, of, of all these games that are coming out, regardless of how it is, how good it is. Yeah, I've, I've long been a proponent of, of sp spreading out the release date, um, just for a lot of reasons, but even just personally, right? Like, I only have a few hours a week to play games, and when all of a sudden you've got all of these games inevitably something gets left behind. You know, I think last year I probably played the most of every game simply because there was at least a, a decent amount of time between the time that Madden hit and then FIFA, and then with NHL not being its typical high, you know, gameplay time for me, um, you know, I, I then spent more time with NBA 2K and then Pro Evolution coming out in November, really, I was it was nice to have a new game and, and a game as great as Pro Evolution there. With all of these games, like you said, in that five-week window, man, that is so difficult. Um, you know, I, I guess it's good in a sense that we got a lot of different stuff that we get to do, but it's it's almost hard to pick and choose. What are we going to do tonight? How how you know what game are we going to play? And inevitably, things get left behind. So yeah, it makes it difficult on a lot of different levels. I would really love it if um, you know if if FIFA were in July or August, you know, and if Madden you know, were you know in late July or early August, you know, especially with no college football, it would just be better for everybody. And like you say. Brian, I think ultimately who this hurts the most is NBA Live just because it could be the best basketball game ever made this fall, but because of the history and because of the avalanche of stuff coming in front of it, it, it puts itself in, in a tough position. Now, conversely, like you said, last year they released a little while afterwards, and uh, the sales numbers were not good. So, I mean... As a you know, as a as an executive in the company, you gotta be like, okay, well, this is the way we did it last year, and the sales were were bad. Yet, you know, we know our game was improved, so you know, we gotta be day and date with NBA 2K, and it's just these are hard decisions to make. So, it's definitely a tough spot. So, well, all right, uh, Brian, one last question for you: What do you think that other new mode is? Um, you know. What's your gut tell you, and do you think that new mode that still is yet to be announced uh, for NBA Live will uh, will you potentially, you know, put more of a spotlight on it and give it a little bit better of a chance to uh, make a dent? Yeah, based on what I've seen and what I've heard over the years, I believe this to be a online you know, multiplayer mode where you know you team up with people similar to EA Sports Hockey League or crew mode in NBA 2K or Adidas Live Run which was in NBA Live 10 which was fairly popular for that game uh, where again you team up with you get four of your friends or whatever and you, you each pick a player and you go um, they, they had uh, an Adidas court and uh, in one image and they had an Adidas uh, outdoor court and another, so so I think it's something along those lines. And the this is what EA should have done two years ago, 
uh, because that's really a differentiator between them and, and 2K, was at the time, 2K didn't have one of those modes. They had dropped it. They had dropped crew out. And people were upset about that, and everybody was hoping NBA Live would come back in with it because NBA, uh, there's a bit of a history lesson <laughs> going through all this, but NBA Elite 11 was going to have EA Sports Basketball Association, which was similar to uh, EA Sports Hockey League. So the same concept, essentially. Of course, that game got scrapped, and then NBA Live 13 was a different, different idea, a downloadable game that got scrapped. And then NBA Live 14, they had to build for the new systems, and they couldn't get in many of the you know deeper type of features in that year or in NBA Live 15, obviously. So uh, I think that's what they're going for, and I think it's it's a good direction to take. But again, a lot will depend on how does their online run uh, and how good is gameplay. Because Rich, even in NBA Live 14, if online had run well, we wouldn't have wanted to play a bunch of online. But it is a very different experience when you control just one player. This was another reason. Uh, why I thought it was so important for Live 14 or Live 15 to have it is because you can mask some gameplay issues when you're just controlling the one player and everybody else around you is human controlled. You're not dealing with AI issues, uh, which we saw in the first two years of the series and on the new generation. So I think it would have helped them more then, but if they can pull it off now, that, that's a big step towards uh, making some progress. All right, well, that is uh, the official Hit the Pass E3 2013 look at NBA, NBA Live 15. Uh, so we'll get out of here on this. If you're an executive on stage at E3, tuck in your shirt. 